Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by our friends at Manscaped. Their Lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that won't nick or snag your nuts. So go to manscaped.com and use code Holly to get 20% off plus free shipping. So Isaiah, you have now decided to take the jump from publicity to performing. So tell me about your very first scene. Who was it with? What company was it for? And how did you feel about it? Well, um, my first scene was given to me um, by Dog Park. And um, it was it was hooked up by Prince Joshua. He, he went to the director and told him to give me a shot. And the director knew who I was from different parties. It was like, of course. And so I was thrown, mind you, I've never been in a threesome in my life before this. I was thrown into a 13-man blow bank. London Keys. <laughs> okay, I am like, oh God, this is such a common story, by the way, for those of you who aren't too familiar or haven't heard my other interviews with male performers, that almost every guy's first scene is a blow bang. And a lot of the reason is, is because if the guy fails, because if you've never performed as a guy in the in an adult scene, it is way harder than you think it is. So if you fail in a blow bang, it's not really that obvious. You can kind of like shrink to the back yeah, and know. nobody really knows. So like th- I hear this all the time and um, man, I feel for you because that is a tough training ground to start with. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, um, it was definitely an experience <laughs> to, to say the least. Um, you know, the girl was London Keys. Mm-hmm. Like you never forget your first, right? And, yeah. <laughs> and um, and I remember, you know, I came in there and um, and as soon as she touched my pants, I got hard because I wasn't used to just girls walking up and being like, ooh, like, like, yeah. like dick. And I was just like, oh, okay. But um, when the scene started and everything got going, I was definitely soft, probably. 70 to 80 percent of the time and the time that i got semi hard um he told me to get in and like carry up and get it before it goes back down but um (laughs) but the thing that saved me was i was able to pop at the end and i had a big pop shot and um every guy that was there thought i wasn't going to be able to pop and so everybody was like low-key waiting for me to fail and you could hear them chattering in the background like oh wow Jaco, nothing's going to come out <laughs> and so like i think my pop shot is what earned me um my next scene and um and then it wasn't as intense as a 13 man blow bang i think it was like a five on one game bang and um and i just kind of figured it out from there but even in the 13 man blow bang, it, it felt like a hangout session. So it was like I met I met all of the male talents in the industry because they were like 75% of all the black male talents was in that one spot that day. <laughs> and um, and it, it always felt like a hangout. So the thing I used to love about Dog Fart when they did their mass gang bangs and when I was there, it always felt like a family barbecue because you never see your co-stars on different sets with you um, as much as you would like and the days that we all had to come to these 15 man blow bangs or gang bangs or whatever we were scheduled for it was like our time to catch up so Mm -hmm. like a lot of time all the OG guys that used to be there um, I used to always hang out I was always that kid that always wanted to hang out with the older kids and um, that's how I learned more techniques and stuff like that and just was just hanging out with the the OGs of the groups and just like learning, learning from them. I'm a sponge. I love to soak up information. So I'm always just like, all right, what got you here? Like, what do you do? And like, how can I implement that for myself? (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's kind of funny that environment that you describe is something that's, I think a lot of people don't expect from like a gangbang scenario or something like that. But remember when we shot that gangbang for Lisa Ann? Yeah. And like, so one of my favorite things about that and one of the, the things that I wish was like kind of captured like in BTS was how, you know, we're in the scene, everybody's fucking her. It's like pretty hardcore and it feels really aggressive. And then we break and then everyone's like talking about sports and like their new favorite TV show. And it like, it just shifts from this like intense sexual experience (laughs) to like this hangout. And that's literally what it's like. And the kind of like sense of like family and community is actually 
really endearing. And I, I wish more people kind of saw that side because, you know, people watch these gangbangs and they think like, oh, this is so intense and hardcore. And this poor girl's being like victimized and like this is, you know, like such an aggressive thing. But it's actually a lot of times, you know, if obviously it's different on different sets with different yeah, directors and producers. But <laughs> a lot of times it's just like it's it's so different, you know, than what people think it is. No, I hear you. I mean, a lot of things, a lot of, um, a lot of things that people fail to realize about this industry is like, even though we're a small community, we're family oriented. Is mm-hmm. what I kind of vibe the most with this industry. Is like, as family oriented as you think we're not, we actually are. And the reason why I say that is because when I first got in the industry, I was just a publicist. I lost half of my friends off back just because I was in the adult industry. I mean, I was, people were like, you're interning where? Oh, no, I can't mess with you. I didn't know you was that type of guy or that you was into that type of thing. And these are friends that I had deep conversations with for years. And I was just like, really? Like, that's it? We're just, just going to shut off? So a lot of times when you get these sets where it's like mass people involved or like a big game bang or so, you know, when you hear that intense sex goes to straight just to sports talk or whatever, the case is that we only have this limited amount of time to be with each other. So we got to get everything off our chest and catch up as fast as we can because when we leave the set, we probably not, it's probably going to be a while till we see each other next. And that time together is like the time we feel as a family because we're all in an industry that we relate to. We all know what's going on. Not too many people outside our industry can relate to us as much as we are able to. And so we try to get all of those family emotions, all of that community building out the way when we're on set because we just don't have that as much as other people in different industries do. Yeah, there's something about being like the black sheep of the entertainment industry that I think makes us more close knit mm-hmm. as as kind of like this ostracized community a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, you could find family in this industry if you're looking for it. That's why, you know, even for Thanksgiving, what I notice is that if you invite a large amount of people to your Thanksgiving dinner, a good amount of those people will show up just because they don't have many places to go. Mm-hmm. And when I, we did our agency, you know, we would invite all the girls in our agency that um, needed a place to spend Thanksgiving. And like, it was always the girls that you didn't think would show up that would show up. All the guys that wouldn't, that you didn't see in a while would come and be like, Hey, like y'all doing something here. And just people want to feel that love and they, they want that community building. That's why community like building is so important to me and having us feel like a family is very great. That's so true. You know, I've never really talked about it or thought about it in that way so much, but there are a, over the holidays, especially Thanksgiving, there's a lot of uh, adult industry like related parties like Brad Armstrong and Jessica Drake yeah. have their superhero Thanksgiving. I, went there I think, last year. Yeah, so I think um, a lot of people was there. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. They always invite me, but I have like two families. I have my husband's and mine that I have to go to. So I'm like my Thanksgivings, unfortunately, booked. But I would love to go because it looks like so much fun. And then I know that I think Greg Lansky did one. It might have been a Christmas thing last year. Right, right. Um. So yeah, there's a lot of. You know, because a lot of people in the adult industry don't necessarily aren't close to their family or, you know, they can't really make the travel to go go all the way to the East Coast or wherever their family may be. And so there's these kind of like organized holidays, which is just like I just think is so sweet. This episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Manscaped. Now, we all love body hair on a man, but you still got to keep that under control. So in addition to Manscaped's Lawnmower 3.0, which is their revolutionary electric trimmer for your nuts, they will not nick or snag them. They have recently also come out with their Weed Whacker. This is an electric trimmer for your ears and your nose two other parts of your body that you definitely need to keep the hair under control. So go to manscaped.com, use code Holly and get 20% off plus free shipping. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.